Hello everyone and welcome to What The Math, this is Anton and today I'm going to actually go back to this game I wanted to finish because it's it's surprisingly good and uh, in this game, and this is a game called Human Resource Machine, uh, we're asked to solve various uh, mathematical puzzles using um, coding and programming. Uh, or Basically it's the skills that you would be, you'd be using as a programmer or a coder and uh, this mission is actually super interesting. It's, it's called um, Fibonacci Visitor and it's uh, named after Fibonacci, the Italian mathematician from the uh, 11th and 12th century and uh, it, this mission is pretty simple you have two numbers and you have to take a number break it down into Fibonacci numbers and put them into the output and basically when there is nothing left you go to the next number now it doesn't sound very hard but it's actually it took me quite a long time to try to solve this and most importantly trying to solve this by completing the two special challenges and here uh, I, I'm basically showing you how I solved it uh, this little uh, worker is going to solve it for us and you can actually copy the code if you want this will give you both of the challenges but while you're watching uh, him solve this I wanted to kind of explain a little bit more about the Fibonacci numbers and uh, talk about their importance in nature and real life as well and also maybe talk a little bit about some of the misconceptions about the Fibonacci numbers so first let's start with a little short definition and definition is really simple. Fibonacci numbers are basically a sequence where the first two numbers are either 1, 1 or sometimes it uh, starts with 0, 1. This is usually a preference. It doesn't matter how you start, you still have the same numbers afterwards. And then each uh, subsequent number or basically every number after that uh, is the sum of the previous two numbers. So here, if let's just say the first number is 0, then uh, it's 1, then it's going to be 1 again. And uh, now we have to add 1 and 1, we'll get 2. Then we have to add 2 and 1, we'll get 3. Add 3 and 2, we'll get 5. And then it's going to be 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 233, and so on. And interestingly, this sequence was actually discovered by the ancient Indian mathematicians long, long before Fibonacci. We actually uh, discovered texts with um, these particular sequences dating something like 200 years before Christ. So basically, they're uh, almost 2,200, actually over 2,200 years old. But it was Fibonacci that basically popularized these numbers and also, uh, since he was actually considered to be the most talented mathematician in the Middle Ages, he made them uh, essentially his own own in a sense and we, today we know them as the Fibonacci numbers. But there are other things that he actually did uh, that are quite important in math as well. Like for example, he popularized uh, the uh, the Arabic numerical system in the Western world. So if it wasn't for him, we would still be counting uh, in a really, really strange way. So he basically took the Arabic numbers from the Arabic mathematicians and he brought them to our Western world. And so when he was popularizing these numbers, he used the, uh, the sequence, which we now know as the Fibonacci sequence, to explain uh, how these numbers numbers work and basically taught the Western world about these Arabic numbers uh, or I guess you can call them Hindu Arabic numbers because that's what they're officially known as and to try to show an example and popularize them he used the, the sequence that we now know as a Fibonacci sequence. And the way he learned about these numbers is because he was actually a son of a very, very wealthy Italian merchant who actually took him everywhere with him. And so uh, when Fibonacci was younger, he got to travel pretty much everywhere. And this is how he actually got to discover these numbers in the other countries. Oh, and by the way, his name was Leonardo, so kind of like Leonardo da Vinci. So we might as well actually call him Leonardo Fibonacci. And interestingly, in his book, which is actually called Liber Abaci, uh, which I think was written in 1202, if I remember correctly, he describes how these numbers can be used more successfully than Roman numerals in systems like, for example, banking and business. So he basically tried to make these numbers more appealing to merchants who would be using them the most. But because technically he didn't actually invent, invent this sequence, and technically this is a sequence he discovered while traveling in uh, somewhere in India or possibly ancient Arab worlds, um, technically they really shouldn't be named after him, but because he was the person who popularized them, this is why we call them uh, the Fibonacci sequence. And in the same book, he even talks about uh, the population of rabbits, which sometimes is an example that's used in the Fibonacci sequence explanation. So here, 
If we assume that a newly born pair of rabbits, one male and one female, start mating uh, and basically every month they get babies, as they create more and more babies, uh, it's supposed to look like a Fibonacci sequence, but the um, the reality is that it's actually a little bit misconstrued here, and the actual sequence when it comes to rabbits is not a Fibonacci sequence. It's actually one of the co most common misunderstandings today. So this is actually quite an unrealistic example, uh, and uh, a more realistic example, which actually is a Fibonacci sequence, is the breeding of bees, and specifically honeybees, and here it's actually called the bee anc ancestry code, and the way it works is, um, if an egg is laid by an unmated female, it will produce a male. If, however, the egg is fertilized by a male, it will hatch a female. And so if you ever look at a male bee, it always has only one parent. A female bee has two parents. And so you're tracing the, the pedigree for any male bee will always produce a Fibonacci sequence of parents, grandparents, great-grandparents, great and great-great-great-grandparents, and so on. So essentially, any male bee in a honeybee colony uh, has a Fibonacci sequence of parents and grandparents, which actually is the perfect sequence explanation and much better than the rabbit explanation. And there are a lot of other biological examples that do have a Fibonacci sequence, uh, but some of them were actually misconstrued again. Well, the most common ones that are real are uh, branching in trees, so you can actually count number of branches in certain trees and they'll produce Fibonacci sequence as well. Also, if you ever look at the, the little pieces, a little, little fruitless of a pineapple, you'll also be able to calculate the Fibonacci number in them. And of course, the infamous artichokes, which I personally don't really like, but some people adore artichokes, but artichokes also produce Fibonacci sequence, as, do, as of course do the pine cones as well. However, interestingly, the seeds of a sunflower um, and spirals of any kind of a shell do not often produce Fibonacci sequence. It's actually, it just appears as a, as a sequence, but it's, uh, it, it does follow a completely different pattern. So when it comes to Fibonacci sequence, you kind of have to really do the math in order to see if it's there or not. And I think overall it's a pretty interesting sequence to study and it's, it's a pretty interesting sequence to try to discover in the real world. But of course the biggest um, reason I wanted to talk about Leonardo Fibonacci is because he essentially was the father of numerical system in, um, in the western world and so he brought the Arabic numbers to our system. He also obviously introduced uh, zero and to be honest zero actually deserves a video of its own because it's a very interesting number that is um, often misunderstood in math and if it wasn't for zero our uh, mathematical knowledge would be so much more simple than it is today. So of course all of these numbers were brought to us by Leonardo of Fibonacci and this is why I kind of wanted to make this video a little bit longer and explain a little bit, a few things and a little bit of history about the introduction of these numbers and why Fibonacci sequence is actually a lot more important than we think. Anyway so that's how you solve this puzzle and this is a little bit of history about uh, Leonardo Fibonacci and uh, the introduction of Hindu Arabic numerical system into the western world into Europe. Thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to like it and possibly subscribe if you still haven't. Also share this this video with your friends or someone who you think might like some mathematical knowledge and wants to know more about the numbers. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you and game you later. Bye bye.